There are a lot of ways to make commas. Lots of ways to make commas. Did I say a lot of ways to make commas? There really are. Some work better than others, and some work better just under certain circumstances. So how do you choose which comma method to pursue? Well, that's exactly what this video is gonna help you with. Let's do this. First, a couple disclaimers right up front. One, this is just my opinion. There's no facts behind this. There's no big studies or anything. This is just from my experience of playing the game for a very long time, and I'm trying to give you some feedback on where I think they fall to try to help you decide maybe how you wanna go try to earn your commas. Second, as I bring the items up here and place them on the board, I will give you my feedback of why I've put them where I have. So hopefully it maybe helps you understand where I put them in that category. And third, if there's something that I leave off the list as a comma making method that you like to use or are aware of, uh, let me know in the comments below what is it and where would you rank it in this table. Now, let's go over what the five categories are. Okay, I broke this into five categories. Number one at the top there, I've labeled as fantastic. This is gonna be something that it doesn't matter if you run solo or with a team. This is something that is going to be a great comma making method for anybody and everybody. You really should be trying to possibly take advantage of this. The second one is great potential, and this applies again to everybody for solo accounters or multi-accounters. But the reason I put this underneath the potential category is, is because it may take a bit more time and or research to really benefit from this comma making method. Number three there in the yellow is multi-accounters. These are gonna be things that really lean themselves in favor of the multi-accounters. It's not to say that solo accounters can't do them or shouldn't do them, but if you're a multi-accounter, this typically leans in your favor and I'll explain why I feel that at each one of those items. Same thing goes with solo players there for the fourth one down. It's not that multi-accounters couldn't do it. It's just that overall this particular comma making method just works better for solo players. And the last one I got down there, I have listed as situational and these have the potential to make some fantastic money, but it's a very niche market, you could say. It's a category or a subject where you're gonna have to be in a very specific situation in order for you to make some commas with it. But I figure it's worth listening Listing them down there. And I got one that I don't have on here. I thought about adding it, but honestly, there was just only one item I could think of that is a nope category, a method of making commas that I would not recommend for anybody. And I'll let you know what that is towards the end of this video. All right, I made up my own little badges down here for each of these. And I know looking at them, some of them you can probably tell what they are just by looking at the icon. Others you'll probably realize what it represents as I explain it. Very first one here, achievements. This definitely goes under the fantastic category. Whether you're running solo or multiple accounts, everybody benefits from doing the achievements. You get resources, you get commas, you get XP. There's just no downside other than the fact that some of them maybe take a little bit of work, but achievements are a fantastic part of the game that you should really be using to be trying to make some commas. Next up, we also had the almanacs going underneath the fantastic category. Again, it doesn't matter if you run multiple accounts or solo, everybody benefits from this. It's a daily task. It usually doesn't take very long. And depending on the resource that's being turned in, you can make good commas. Plus you can get those resources literally right outside the temple a lot of times because people are set up there in merch mode. So you don't have to do hardly any work. You just gotta do it daily and in the end, you get a dofus. Okay, the next one I got here is the Arc Monsters, and I'm gonna put this underneath multi-accounters. Yes, there are solo characters that can go out there and do a whole lot when it comes to trying to capture these things. Also, if you're a solo character and you're just running around trying to find them to sell their locations, that obviously something a solo character can do very well. I'm going at it more from the aspect that you're trying to actually capture them to sell them in the market. Some of the low level ones are probably pretty easy to get, but in the grand scheme of thing, it, it really depends. You don't know necessarily what kind of the mob size is that you're going to encounter. So the bigger group you got when you go looking for those, typically the better you're gonna do. So that's why I put that one in the multi-accounter section. All right, this next one I got here is for bounty hunting or using the militia to go out there and get those diploons. I'm putting this underneath the great potential. Both solo accounters and multi-accounters can really benefit from going out there and capturing these guys, bringing them back. In fact, there's some quests where you actually need to go do that. Yeah, the bigger the group you have with you, you're gonna be able to take on whatever mob it is in the group with. Sometimes these things can be with a small group, sometimes they're with a big group. So having more people with you could be helpful. You could do really well here for commas, but it might take a bit 
bit of time, might take a bit of research, and you might need to go get some people. But solo counters can do a bunch of these as well. So I've put it underneath the great potential category. Okay, breeding and leveling mounts. At first I thought about separating these into two separate categories because it's two very different ways to play the game, but I do feel like it both falls underneath the great potential category. If you are a solo accounter, you can get just as much benefit from this as a multi accounter whether you're going out and trying to capture the mounts or you're just working on trying to level them and breed them. The process is about the same for everybody. There's no big advantage one way or the other. In fact, there are some pros and cons to both sides of it. But the matter of the fact is, there's great money that can be made there, whether it's strictly using the mounts or possibly exchanging it for scrolls and then sticking the scrolls in the market. The people that really invest some time into learning how to do the breeding process can make amazing commas. And the people that go buy those mounts and grind them up to level 100 and slap them back in the market real fast, again, they can make some really good commas, but they gotta invest that time to make it happen. Okay, buying in bulk. This is definitely going underneath the fantastic category in my opinion, because it doesn't matter if you're high level, low level, mid level, solo or multi accounter everybody can benefit from this, which is a tiny bit of research. The only requirement might be up front is you gotta have at least some commas to work with. If you don't have many, start with low level items, buy them in bulk, break them up, relist them and sell them. If you got lots of money, try to go for some higher priced items. It's a way that once you start to learn those markets and learn how to buy big chunks and sell them in smaller chunks everybody can make some good commas off of that and yeah it can get a little competitive in the market sometimes but in the end you typically will come out ahead if you watch what you're doing all right along that same line i'm putting this buy mage flip gear into the great potential you got to kind of know what you're doing you want to look at the market you want to look at the stats that are on the other gear of what you're thinking about buying but what you're trying to do is find a really good deal buy something that's cheap just fix it maybe over mage a little bit and slap it back in the market for a nice profit with a little bit of work and a little bit of practice you can get good at this and make some really good commas all right and if you didn't figure out what this one is already this is crushing and selling ruins again it's going underneath great potential you got to do a little research you got to do a little digging you got to look at what it is that you're doing because you can also lose a lot of commas really fast here if you're not careful but great potential is definitely the category for that one okay right here dungeon leeching this one definitely goes underneath the situational yes you can make amazing commas with this there are people out there that they literally that's the only way that they go about making commas because it is so good but you got to have the right class you got to have the right gear you got to know how to work the dungeon so it's a super situational way lots of commas you could possibly make but it's very situation it's not for everybody but that's where that one would definitely go Next up, we got Dungeon Rusher. Again, underneath great potential. I'm putting this here because you're not gonna make killer commas on this typically. I mean, I guess it would kind of depend on the dungeon that's being used or dungeons at times, but you can make some commas with this, whether it be selling the keys that are needed for the dungeon or maybe selling the resources that you know are needed to make the keys. Maybe it's sitting in merch mode right outside of the dungeon with a bunch of the keys there. Or maybe you're selling potions or breads or something that you think people might need after the dungeon or before they get ready to run it again. Maybe it's leeching people through it. There's just a whole lot of ways a dungeon rusher could be used to make commas, but it's gonna take a bit of research on your part to figure out how can you use that dungeon rusher to make some commas. So that's why I put it underneath great potential. Okay, we got the encyclopedia going underneath the fantastic category. If you're not familiar with what I mean by the encyclopedia, I talked about this in my latest comma making video, 13 ways to make commas. Basically, you're gonna go underneath your encyclopedia. You're gonna select the resource category. Then you're gonna sort from low to high and then just start scrolling down that list until you get to a comma value that you think is something you would like to go. And you start looking at the resources to see what's dropped by monsters until you spot one got a nice value and it's a monster that you can go fight then you go grind those things possibly even look to see if the area has a map bonus because that could increase the chance of your drops but it's a fantastic way whether you're running solo or running with multiple accounts it's a great way to find a really high demand area to go get some resources that you could probably put in the market and move fairly quickly fantastic method that's why it goes to the top all right we got another one here that's going to go underneath great potential and this is flipping pets Kind of the same thing as gear, but what you're going to do here is you're going to buy a level zero or level one pet, something that hasn't been leveled up for really cheap. Then you're going to slap some food into it to level it up 
to maybe the mid range, maybe up to a little bit higher than that and put it back in the market to hopefully make a big profit. The reason this is great potential is because one, you got to know what the pet's going to be worth after what you spend to get it and level it up. Also, you want to make sure you're not going to be getting a pet that's not in demand. Maybe the reason that they're dropping in value is because nobody wants that pet right now. So you got to do some research, got to spend a little time looking into it, but you could make some really good money if you know what you're doing. Another one for great potential is merch mode. Yes, if you know where to set up or what to set up with, there's a lot of places you could make some money with merch mode. You don't want to be setting up in those very random locations as you're running between one dungeon to another and you're like, oh, I got to go. So I'm just going to switch to merch mode. Yeah, you might make some sales, but if you're trying to make some commas, with it you know you do a bit of research look at your resources find out what you got that maybe some people are going to be wanting or needing for different things i know around the amakna village there are lots of people sitting there in merch mode and there's tons of them selling all kinds of dofuses it's a very competitive area for a dofus purchase but maybe you go set up where there's a quest item that's going to be needed and you know people might show up there without having that resource well camp right there with a bunch of those resources people will buy them from you instead of zipping all the way back a lot of times if you look ahead at the almanacs you can get a bunch of those resources for a few days try to set up somewhere outside that temple there's just lots of situations where whether you are a low mid or high level there's ways that you can set up in merch mode to actually make some money you just got to put a little bit of planning into it first okay the next one for multi accounters is create an alternate character yes solo players can benefit from this as well you create a second character you start going through achievements you're gonna unlock the commas behind those you won't get the resources on the second third or fourth run but you can still get those commas and you still level it at a multiplied rate so that's a benefit as well but the people that can really benefit from this when it comes to trying to make some commas off of it it's gonna be multi accounters it's gonna be people that have a team of three or more and they create one or two brand new characters and they just power level them. They just go to areas and they just smash out achievement after achievement and they're just grinding their way through and they take that character from nothing to 200 in a matter of no time, which can be done so quick nowadays, it's almost silly. But if somebody wants to do that, you're not maybe gonna make amazing commas considering the amount of time you're gonna put in, but it's guaranteed commas. That's the nice thing about it. If you don't have to buy gear and stuff for them, you just got them in wisdom gear or whatever and you save that gear and you just always use it on the next set of characters, you don't have to spend any more commas and every achievement you knock out is a guaranteed set of commas. You're not waiting for something to sell. You're not putting something in merch mode. You're not competing with anybody. It's guaranteed commas, which is always my favorite kind of commas, but it takes a bit of work and it definitely leans towards favor with the multi accounters. That's why it goes in that category. All right, we got another fantastic method here. I'm calling low level meat. This is the hunter profession. Whether you never level your hunter at all and you only grind up there in Incarnum, or you level it some so that you can get some astrib area meats and things like that. They constantly sell. People are needing those because they just want to jump past those low levels with their hunter profession. Just go get a bunch of those meats, slap them in the market. You'll make commas. The higher you level your hunter or the more people you got, the more meats you drop, the more commas you can make in that same amount of time. But if you're just looking for something to do that's a little different, plus you get the resources and stuff you can sell as well, it's a fantastic method for all levels. Maybe favors low levels a little bit more because at least it's a little more relevant, but it's a great way to make some commas that pretty much foolproof. All right, another one here. I'm gonna put this underneath the fantastic. I thought about putting it underneath great potential, but the truth is over maging gear is fantastic for everybody to make commas. This is not the idea that you go out and you buy a piece of gear with the intention of trying to flip it for a profit. This is you craft a piece of gear and then you mage it before you list it. Now, this will take some effort on your part to make sure that you have leveled your mage to the point where you could modify that piece of gear that you just made. But if you can, even at the low levels, putting some effort into maging those things, extra little stats here and there, or just making the stats you know, near perfect before you list it, you will likely sell your item faster than the person that just crafted it, slapped it in the market, whether it was because they couldn't mage it or not. So yeah, it does take time and effort up front to do it, but it's a fantastic way. Basically, you're working professions on that. And I've got a little more. I'm going to break the professions down here real soon, but just maging gear instead of just throwing it in the market, however it pops out, it's definitely going to be beneficial to you if you can do that. 
Okay, perk hunting I am putting underneath situational. I feel like hunting perks is a big gamble sometimes, unless you've done it a lot and you get to kind of know the names of the different guilds and the different alliances, and you kind of learn which ones are the safe ones to attack and which ones are not. You gotta know what you're doing. You gotta be a PVPer. You might even need a group of people that are really into PVP because these are very likely going to be very large fights at times, depending on how many people hop in on the fight, obviously. I don't see it being something that's super easy for one way or the other, and I feel like there's a lot that has to come together for it to work really well. So I put that underneath the situational category for perk hunting. Perk planting, however, I'm putting underneath the fantastic category. I feel like everybody can benefit from this, whether you're a solo player or a multi-accounter. If you've got a guild that gives you the right to place perks and you're getting ready to go farm some areas, you can place one of these down and go grind in that area for a while and it's gonna help gather a whole bunch of extra resources for you. If you're in a strong alliance or a strong guild, you might be able to just place it out there, leave it for a long time and know that it's gonna be safe because it is protected. But placing perks has a whole lot less risk to it in my mind than trying to hunt the perks. And I feel like everybody could benefit from placing perks, even if it's just for short placements. You just gotta make sure you make enough money off of whatever you're doing to make up for the cost of that potion. We got the four different types of professions, and I do feel like these favor different situations. So for the crafting professions, it's gonna be your tailor, your jeweler, shoemaker, that kind of thing. I'm putting this underneath the multi-accounter category because those higher levels, you're gonna need a lot of resources for those. And the people that can typically go out and gather a whole bunch of resources very quickly if they need to, are gonna be multi-accounters. Again, solo accounters can do it. If they get a big group of people together, they can go do it. If you're on Illy's Ale, you don't really got an option. You gotta find people to go try to do it. The only reason I put it here is because I feel like it favors multi-accounters. And I would assume most people probably agree with that. Multi-accounters are gonna benefit from that a little bit more than probably people that are not. However, the gathering professions, I'm gonna put underneath the solo players because yeah, multi-accounters can go out there. They can click on multiple resources at a time with all their characters and try to harvest a whole bunch at one time with a bunch of people. But I feel like the people that are really gonna benefit from the gathering professions are gonna be the people that grab one character, that go running around a whole bunch of areas in a single area, and they just focus on gathering as much as they can. Okay, the hunting profession I'm putting underneath, fantastic. Whether you are running solo or running multiple accounts, everybody can benefit from this. You basically just have to make sure you got a hunting weapon on your character or characters when you go fight mobs. Now, if you wanna be able to drop those meats from higher level mobs, then obviously you have, you have to invest some time into leveling that hunter as well but it's a very passive profession. I've often commented as well that it's a profession you level once and then you're done, which is wonderful. So yeah, hunter profession, I believe benefits everybody. And if you haven't spent a little bit of time on it, I highly recommend you do it. It's a fantastic comma maker. And the last profession category here is your mage. And I'm putting this underneath great potential because again, you're gonna have to invest some time and you're gonna have to know what it is that you're going to be leveling. Now, technically you don't have to actually level the crafting profession associated with the mage. So you don't have to be a level 100 shoemaker to mage a level 100 shoe. You could completely skip the shoe crafting profession if you want and just only mage gear if you want to. And honestly, I think you're gonna get the most bang for your buck if you do level the crafting profession with it so that you can have all the profit from everything that you're doing. So maging is a way you can make some great commas, but you gotta put a little work in and a little planning. Okay, PVP pebbles, I'm putting this underneath the fantastic category. I'm just recently starting to get into some PVP stuff. I've never been much of a PVPer, although I may not be the biggest fan of PVP, I can't deny the fact that pebbles sell fantastic. Pebbles make commas. If you are a PVPer and you love PVP, you should definitely be exchanging those tokens for the different pebbles list them in the market you're going to make killer commas with that so whether you're solo or multi-counter as long as you win a lot you could really benefit from that <laughs> all right and the first question mark here we've got quests that are done one time and then you're done so maybe this is the main story type quest or side quest but it's a green exclamation mark those are fantastic ways to be making commas just like the achievements the nice thing about the quest is it's guaranteed commas and guaranteed resources a lot of times and there's even extra benefits that come along with them at that at times. So I know questing isn't for everybody, so maybe this isn't quite your cup of tea, but if you're looking to make some guaranteed commas 
and you just want to do something a little different in the game, go knock out some quests. You might be pleasantly surprised. Another one going underneath the fantastic category are quest related resources. You know, one of the nice thing about when you go through and do quests and achievements is you begin to learn what resources are needed for those. Whether it's special events, seasonal activities, things like that, you begin to learn what is in high demand at different times of the year. And you could really work that to make some fantastic commas, especially ones that you know are done a lot by new people coming to the game or people creating alternate accounts. Those quest resources, get them, go out and gather a bunch of them, list them in the market at the right price, at the right time and you can make some really good commas. And another one that goes kind of along that same category is quest souls because there are certain quests in the game where you actually have to have soul captured monsters. Well some people instead of going out and actually doing those quests on their own they'll go check the soul market and see about purchasing those. But a lot of these quest souls involve a dungeon boss and people maybe don't want to go run that. So go out there capture it yourself especially the emerald dofus quest line. If you're a solo counter it doesn't matter you could go get the dungeons that are required for that depending on your level but you could go out and capture those by yourself and list them in the market those are fantastic way to make commas as well all right blue exclamation marks repeatable quests i'm putting this underneath the great potential because the nice thing about repeatable quests is again it's guaranteed commas but you might need to look into them to see how much time are you going to need to invest maybe what resources do you need to invest in order to complete that repeatable quest but if you spend a little bit of time and if you find yourself a nice set of repeatable quests that you like to knock out and you know how many commas that you're going to get from that, well, you can get yourself on a nice little system where you make guaranteed commas at an expected pace for an expected amount of time. You put a little bit of effort into that and you could really make some good commas on that and you know exactly what to expect. There's no selling, there's no chance involved, there's no wondering what you're gonna get. You know exactly what you're gonna get and you're gonna know how long it's gonna take you to do it. That's a win-win, but you might have to put a little bit of time into it first to figure out which one of the bazillion repeatable quests out there do you wanna spend the time doing. All right, last one I got down here for situational is gonna be seasonal activities, whether it's Christmas Island, Fleister Island, or All Howans event. There's constantly seasonal activities. I believe there's four that are regularly repeated in the game. And if you work on those, whether it's building up before it releases or saving up the materials for after it's closed, you can make some really good commas on that. But again, you're gonna to have to do some planning. You're gonna to have to do a bit of research and it's very situational because it's not your around and even if you have all that stuff that you think is worth some money it's only worth money if people are now looking for it so if you bought all that stuff up saved all that stuff up and you put it in the market and find out nobody's crafting that gear or needing that resource it could sit there until the event opens again the following year so it's a situational thing but you could make some good money with it all right another one i'm putting here underneath great potential is shopping the merchants that are in merch mode i mentioned a moment ago down there around the amakna village it's not uncommon to find tons and tons of people set up there in merch mode and there's lots of dofuses down there as well but there's people that set up to sell resources experience scrolls all kinds of different things and if you know what to look for and you know what something is actually worth and you take the time to go and look for all those you can find some valuable stuff buy them all up from the merchant and then go stick them in the market and turn a profit that way or maybe even just stick them in your own merch shop and then when you switch into merch mode you sell them for what they're actually worth but again it's going to take some work and some effort on your part this used to be one of my favorite ways to make commas was I would shop all the merchants and then just to go stick their resources up in the market. So it's a great way you could make some money, but you got to know what you're doing. You got to put some time into it. All right. And the last one I'm putting here, and it's definitely going to go underneath solo players as the favorite. Now, again, multi-accounters can do it. I feel like I got to put that disclaimer because I don't want somebody getting upset with me saying that, hey, I multi-account and I run all of them through a treasure hunt. Well, that's awesome. I'm glad you can multitask like that because that is far beyond on me but i do feel like the whole aspect of treasure hunting favors solo encounters running one character at a time you go pick up a treasure hunt and then you go run it now one aspect of that that can be beneficial to a multi counter is you can have all your characters try to pick up a treasure hunt and then see if any of them landed in the bonta or the brockmar area because you get double the treasure chest and double the xp of any of those done in those areas so then you can do just the treasure hunts that land in those areas then when the timer runs out cancel the ones on the one that didn't land there and then redo the treasure hunt see if you get somebody else that lands up there that's one way that a multi-counter 
here could really benefit from treasure hunting, they can increase their odds of getting a double treasure hunt landing. But for the most part, I feel like one person picking up a treasure hunt, you go out there, you run through it as fast as you can, you do the fight, run back, grab another one. I feel like that's a solo encounter's dream. It's it's built perfect for you. You're gonna get great XP. You're gonna get some awesome resources. So that's why I put that underneath the category of solo players. All right, that's my list. Now I did tell you I had one idea that I came up with that is underneath a nope category. I would not spend time doing this method to try to make commas. And that is grinding mobs. Now it's one thing to go grind mobs for a resource. It's another thing to go grind mobs for the XP. But if the goal is to go out there and just drop commas, don't waste your time with it. You're not gonna make a whole lot of commas that way. I like to call the commas that you get from actually fighting mobs, I like to call those fee commas. Meaning those are the kinds of commas that are gonna cover your fees. Anything that revolves a fee, like a zap, accessing your bank, listing things in the market, stuff like that. I feel like that's enough commas that are regularly coming in to help cover some of those costs, but you're not gonna make millions of commas just by grinding mobs in any reasonable amount of time. So that's my suggestion for the nope category. Make sure you have another reason for going to grind on mobs other than just trying to drop the commas because I don't think you're gonna make much progress. <laughs> So there's my table, there's my list. I hope that helps you maybe decide what it is that you wanna go spend your time doing based upon the situation that you're in. It might change from night to night, week to week, but hopefully that maybe helps you figure out where you wanna focus your attention, try to make the most commas possible. If you could do me a huge favor, real fast, if you haven't already, and smack that like button, I would really appreciate it. It would truly help the channel out. And if what you like is Dofu's PVM tips, guides, and gameplay, consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on notifications so you know exactly when my videos go live. Until next time, you all be safe out there, and I will see you on the next one. Dofu.